Hi, Boris. Let me click on this. Hello. This meeting is being recorded. Okay, got it. Wait. Uh -huh. Hello. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Actually, today's Christmas here. So, oh, 25th. Everyone... I thought it was 25th, but yeah, Merry but Christmas then. At the night yeah, but... of 24th. Yeah, <clears throat> well, okay. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, technically, it's not my Christmas. I mean, like, I, I'm Serbian, so we are like, we are Orthodox Church, so we have Christmas on 7th of January. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I'm not particularly into any churches, but today is a like Catholic Protestant Christmas. So I think today, 24, to, tonight they wait for it. So tonight was the day with Jesus born. Okay. And then tonight, 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 as you can see, my surname is my surname is foreign, but my husband is not religious, so I always confuse this um, Christmas and etc. <laughs> <laughs> but for whoever is celebrating it, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Uh, so exactly, I was just rushing to the supermarket because everything is now closing. Ah, okay. So, <laughs> All right. Yeah, to get things yeah. to make it. Uh, so thanks for giving us uh, your time on a very uh, special. No, thank day. you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so I I think I, I usually I am by the way I'm not um, technically from cinema I am a writer and uh, so I sometimes uh, when I do Q and A's I in the beginning try to say what I felt about the movie what I thought. Mm -hmm. Maybe their own, um, because maybe you are tired of explaining so much to yourselves anyway. So for me, it was, it, it, I like absurd art a lot. And I felt the, the absurd elements in your movie. Uh, I really liked it because I like the, the opportunities absurd gives to any narration. It, it, is, it gives us more challenging thought processes, in my opinion. And it's also mostly, um, there is a touch, I think, about nonviolence, which also in, is in your movie, because it's an event, especially I'm from Turkey, the Turkish people are very um, heated people, even in one the bar scene, one of the person tells to the other, be calm, be calm. So because it was the calm nature as a choice to take when there's an uncertain event, like there's a something happened, you don't know for sure. So you either go ahead and claim things, or you just steal my thing, or you take the attitude like your movie suggests, be calm. <laughs> and then nearly being calm um, unfurls uh, more soul in life because normally the film starts in a sterile bank environment. There's logic there, there's order. There's not much soul. Everything goes very precisely maybe, but maybe there's no soul. And this man, the bank officer also after a point, he says, I can't help. And, and you even cut the scene there when he's trying to say something and we don't even hear because it's there. It's you, nobody is certain for something, nothing can be done. But we see even a solution given to this character with a rose, the absurdity, take it like this, then you don't have money, you have rose. We have all the solutions, we have the soul, we have drama, we have everything in this bar that he goes. So just as, as you say, a simple event, but how we take that simple event unfurls more life into the movie, like more soul. So it's like the misfortunes for me, how, can break, can, they can break the boring and the routine of a life. It's a little bit it's something like a backbone, I thought like that, but what was your inspiration to do the movie? Um, the, the, honestly, different ones. Uh, so uh, this film was done as a part of my studies and we have this uh, uh, collaboration between our uh, university and television, which is French German television Arte. And then usually they come every every year and they give like a very broad topic on which we write scripts and then they select a few scripts that they're going to give fundings for. So that here the topic was uh, Du bist anders, which means in German you are you are different. different. Okay. So that was like I started thinking from that from that point you're different. And also for me, I wanted, because I, I come from Serbia, but I study here in Germany and I haven't done films in Serbia. 
So I very much wanted to have also a character with my background. I wanted to go into, into, into that direction. So these are kind of the moments how, how, how the things came together because sometimes it's not really the story. Sometimes it's more like me thinking, okay, I would like to work with this kind of character and I would like to work in this kind of location and so on. Okay. And, and then this, this story happened once, like most of the stories which I do, they're usually the stories that, that, that happened. And this happened with me, to me in Serbia in, in a post because there was a man behind me and I had this like bill, but it was very little money. So nothing happened out of it. And then I saw this man standing behind me holding this same bill. And I don't know, and I could not find it in my pocket anymore and and i don't know how but like it's some somewhere very deep inside i think it fell out of my pocket and he took it I, i'm i'm like uh, very much convinced even today and although i didn't do anything about it you know but i was just trying to think hypothetically if there is like i don't know like a young serbian man in berlin in germany and it's much more money you know mm -hmm. how would he react and what could hypothetically uh, uh, happen. And then on the other hand, like the film uh, tries to depict in a short time, because it's quite a short film, uh, uh, try to depict this kind of different immigrant communities. You know, that was like very clear to me because on one hand, the film is uh, about young Serbian immigrant in Berlin. But on the other hand, when we speak about immig immigration and immigrants in, 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 in Germany, in Berlin, the Turkish community is by, by far uh, largest, no? Mm -hmm. So, and, and then also what was other thing for me is was also that I thought like in a sense of like mentality or, or a sense of type of man or a sense of, you know, it's also the closest to, to, to Serbia in a way, or let's say, or let's say uh, Balkans in, in, in a way. So I, I feel like, you know, the, the kind of Turkish culture is uh, very close to, 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 to Serbian cu culture. There, there are many overlapping there in a sense of temperament and, and so on and so on. So this kind of came came uh, logical to me, you know, to include also kind of Turkish community in the film. And then on the other hand, also it deals about prejudices, I think in a way, I mean, I don't want to say anything concrete, but like for me, you know, I just like thought, you know, if I have like a young Serbian man who loses the money and then he turns around and he sees, I don't know, uh, good looking German, French or Englishman, gentleman standing there, he would never assume that he stole his money. By, but when you see the other immigrant, you assume immediately that another immigrant stole your money. So this is funny thing that actually the most of the discrimination that happens towards immigrants or different races, nationalities happens among those communities even among those were actually exactly. uh, that was going to be my next question you kind of answered uh, some of the things i was going to ask but i can still maybe mention because for example when i'm watching the first time i remember i was like no should the potential thief shouldn't be turkish i'm tired of this i was like a little bit like oh no no and then you really had an interesting twist because we become with a turkish maybe potential thief and now we end up uh, going to the place like a little ghetto, or I mean bar, but there, yeah, there are many like bars, exactly. Yeah, the subculture. We enter this exactly, world the, exactly world of the subculture, the Turkish community in Berlin, and then we immediately get engaged with the talk of this man, nearly the police, the way the police acts. And I, my husband is from US. And he is Native American, and sometimes I I can also relate to that from um, states. So this racism, even when it happens to you from the government bodies, it really affects you horribly. And this man is so so ten so um, understandably um, very disturbed about what how he was treated. He says there's no human rights in this country. Yes. So it, it starts with a potential thief, the Turkish, and then Turkish becomes somebody being exactly. uh, um, exposed to great horrible racism. So, and actually even for me, the credits, the credits was like a little bit like documentary. I, I read that you also do documentary, the murals, and it says Kira Çok Yüksek, meaning the rent is 
uh, all so high and all these women. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if it is Nuri EM. I checked it a bit. I didn't have enough time. I checked it quite late. The, the mural was done by whom, but they're really very mm -hmm. nice. So it even ends with a documentary um, taste mm -hmm. on Turkish yeah. communities' problems. So it, it, it is nearly like you, you have story with the story in just less than seven minutes. You touch the you touch many, many things. It's really, mm. really congratulations to all your team Thank for you. that. And so did, do you feel um, that you must be feeling so uh, much the racism? You, uh, if you see it, probably you are reacting to it. So how is it burden for immigrants? Is it really um, lots of racism for immigrants? Or do you get affected think, by it? Uh, no, like, uh, 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 I think, it, of course, there is. I think there, there is still a lot. And as I said, like for me, it's more interesting this kind of racism which happens between different uh, oh, communities. Yes. Among the it's like, immigrants. Okay. I know you have. I know you have Asian community in the sense of Far East, you know, the Chinese community, and so on. And you have a Turkish community, and you have Balkan ex Yugoslavian community, and so on, and so on, and so on. Like so, different third world communities. I think that this racism this happens there in between is actually for me more in, in, interesting, you know. But I think also Berlin is very, very um, how do I say like it, I mean everything depends like I think on, on the class that you belong to and so on and mm -hmm. so on, you know. But the people I, I still feel it's like people don't yeah people still stay within their own groups, you know. Because I also coming from Serbia, I know many people in in Berlin who've been living here. For, for a decade or longer and they don't they don't interact much uh, outside their own uh, circle yeah. a Serbian circle or Balkan circle and so on. I actually no. understand like, oh sorry actually what was, what, was, what was important for me here was like to work with real people as I like to do so like I, I wasn't I wasn't working with actors I wasn't finding actors so I, I, actually, I have to say a big thank you. There's a bar called, called Iguana Bar. It's in Neukölln in Berlin. And as I was finding actors for the film, I was going from one bar to another bar. So this is one bar who gave me a lot of help. This guy who's playing a keyboard, Genchai, he's actually the owner of that bar. Right. And the older man, Ahmed, he actually works also in that bar. And he's his uncle. So, oh, so they, they support me a lot in this film. And then also Ivan, who is the main character, so to say, he was also in the moment when I met him, he was also a man who just recently arrived to, to Germany. Mm -hmm. you know, and he was also, uh, in a way, still finding his way. And he was new in Berlin and so on. So I really much work with, with real people here. And then I try not to put too, too many sentences in their, in, their, in their mouth. You know, I rather try to listen to them. For example, the story of Genshe when he's talking about the police, that was a story that he told me. He told me that story is like over a drink. And then that day when he came to a set, I just asked him to, to repeat that story. Mm. So, so he, yeah. he actually just re repeated the story, which was, this was never scripted and so on. So, so it, it was just like using the stories that people actually do have, you know. Okay. And then, and then not, not, not push some words into their mouth, you know. Okay. I so. think it is understood. There is an organic feel because also this little time and how much things for all. And yeah, sometimes acting, sometimes you understand, even if it's a good actor, you sometimes so much understand there is act going on. And in this mm -hmm. movie in the bar, as I said, there's so much soul, there's so much life, there's that um, organic warmed and everything is really felt i kind of thought maybe they are not professional actors but what you said about among i forget it the racism between the immigrant communities i mm -hmm. think i i also understand why you're interested because you you nearly think it shouldn't be there but it is there so it is a very dark side of human nature and i also yeah. learned that blacks sometimes in states uh, doesn't like Native Americans coming into their uh, yeah. protest and yeah. stuff. Again, I don't understand. It is beyond me. I don't understand mm -hmm. this, but there are lessons to take from there, probably for all of us. So mm -hmm. um, my next question, 
it will be a question that from the my the directors uh, the team uh, sent me you know as i said i am not <laughs> that moved but i understand their question um the, the one that they sent me they say that this lately uh, especially the effects of full feature film on short film comes in uh, especially regards to the classic narration narrative and like this three act script is on the rise on short films and yours is more like fragment and a talk about moment we don't see so much character unfolding the plot does unfold. it's more like do i say it correctly is more like it's not a three act script so so then because yeah, of because exactly. of it it is more close to the nature and essence of short film so did you intend uh, what was the reason for this to for this story and do you intend to uh, work like that in short films in your future films okay so if i understood right because there were some uh, bugs in the in the yeah in, maybe in internet was well, well, do you want me to what was the intent uh, what was the intent to have this this kind of structure or not uh, not to have three Three acts. Three acts. Not to have yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. This this story came very organically. You know, like uh, how do I say? I, I, I wasn't thinking in a three act, two act, five act. I was not thinking at all about it. it just like for me, uh, uh, I mean, every film is very different, no? So here it was uh, about the people and the people who interest me. So everything that can distract it. In a sense of plotting too much and so on, I try to to remove uh, as uh, as quick as possible. Uh, also, I think when you talk about such a because I I, I was uh, this film was commissioned and they commissioned for me to do uh, a five six minute film, you know, like so. So it was not my also. I, I was like what? King, I was employed to me. You froze. Unfortunately, my internet. You froze. Can you repeat? You said from the six yes. minutes. I said for this film. For this film, this film was commissioned in a way. You know, yeah. like they asked me to do a six-minute film. You know, so I, I I knew the duration of a film before I even started writing. What should be a duration of a film? No, it okay. came up to be that way. So um, I had a script which was a bit longer, to be honest. And the script was more, you know, mm, so more elaborate. But then I was like, okay, I need to like put this thing somehow down and so on, so on. Also, we were shooting in a, in a worse corona time here. So this was extremely stressful. So many things also had to be adjusted there and so on. But speaking about the structure, I mean, I just wanted to like move the whole plot thing uh, at the beginning as quick as possible away so that we can more stay with, with, with the protagonists and with characters, you know, that we are not, uh, um, how do I say like the, the plot is just like you don't you don't even see it in the film this plot you don't see whether he takes the money or he doesn't take the money or yes. there's nothing I just say it my money is missing and I think he took yes. it from me so so the plot is completely happened somewhere in the off screen of off space and so on and so on so I just want to remove this as far as quick as possible that in this very limited time which is like really limited uh, I can stay with, with people as, as 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 much as possible, you know, because just the ending scene. I mean, the last shot, which is I don't know, it's forty seconds or something. It's like nothing. But if you think about six minutes, forty seconds, a huge, <laughs> it's huge amount of time. That's like a, almost twenty percent of a film. So, so I just wanted like I, I don't think that like this kind of three X stories or some big character developments really works. For such for a format such as this one you know and so so of course the format always leads the leads the way that we are doing. and also when you're working with non-actors which i prefer to do then you also have to write uh, write the kind of roles that the non-actors can 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 perform you know yeah, because okay. it's very different when you write a role for an actor and i think it's a quite different when you write at least in my experience when you write uh roles uh, for for like non-actors i like uh, instead of like having some kind of character development let's say and some kind of arc and change and i don't know i just prefer to to i don't know have different types of characters and then see how they interact with each other 
Yeah, so it's interesting. I, um, you keep saying it, so I'd like to mention it once more uh, also for the audience. So you choose to work with um, non-professional actors. Yeah. Is, I mean, um, is it, you find it more organic? Or? Yes, yes. Because there's, I mean, don't get me wrong. I also did film with actors before, and it's it's very beautiful, but but it's it's different, you know, because somehow um, it's just very different. Because if you work with an actor, you would talk quite a bit about the script, and you would talk quite a bit about the characters and so on. While when you work with non-actors, I mean, almost no one asks me what is the script about. Yeah, you you're know, right. no, no one asked me. They're just there and they're just in this moment yeah. and they're, they're just being them. So like, I don't know when he's walking or when Gentry is talking, they're just talking for the sake of the scene, you know, and they're not talking, okay. knowing what will happen after All this right. dialogue and knowing what happened before this. So they're adjusting this in a way. No, it's like they're completely objective in the way that they perform, objective okay. to the storyline. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's very beautiful. And there you have like a very special trust that you get from them. I mean, it's a huge trust to to to, to act in something where you don't know what's really going, mm -hmm. what's really happening in this film. No, and, and 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 that's also for me extremely liberating. Yeah, because maybe it's you know, uh, it catches you, the soul you, of you start doing um, artists. Sometimes exactly. doing something voluntarily has a different soul. It is even for our um, science. Mm -hmm. I'm also a scientist. I sometimes you do something even if you, they won't pay you you still do it and there's so much passion there um maybe yeah. but i don't think everybody yeah. is very successful with non-actors then you must really know how to you must have a good um communication skills or uh, the way you are as a director <laughs> probably there's something in you that you can do it uh, because sometimes some other people try it and it, the result is not uh, very good. But in your, in this movie, I really didn't know that they were not professional. And I really think you really achieved it. I didn't see many of your movies, but now I'm more curious even to see more of your movies. <laughs> yeah. So um, I was, I don't know, because- I think I, For me, the casting is, yeah. Okay. I'm listening. I just said that for me, the most when it comes to when it comes to actors or let's say people who will act in the film, for me the casting is the more most important part of the of the whole process. And once it's casted very when it's casted the way I want it to be, uh, then I don't really work much. We don't work. We don't rehearse. We don't uh, prepare things. We don't we don't learn even dialogues. I usually just give dialogues before we shoot if there are any. Or I just give a topic if there is any, but there is no rehearsing or something like that. You know, it's just like for me, what it takes long, lots of time is to find the people for those for those roles. But then when it's when it, when I manage to to do that, and uh, uh, then it's like uh, that there is not much work left. Okay, yeah, it's it's it was interesting to. Um, I am looking. I have a little uh, strange moment with your movie, which I thought because I kept thinking of the absurd. Because as I said, I really like it, the black comedy in a way. Your movie starts with the black sea, um, sea screen. It stays a little bit. What was your intention doing that? It it nearly is like. But it starts with the, with the, with the black screen. It starts with a black screen and the uh, subtitles, but we don't see anybody for a while. It's just black screen. Was it my computer who had a problem? No, no, it was good. It was good. You, you, <laughs> saw, you saw it. You saw it well. Well, I don't know. I, I just thought like uh, uh, I, I like uh, some things are not so logical. Some things are rather the uh, feeling, you know. Some, yeah. some things I I don't I don't see I don't perceive see everything so cognitively which happens in the film sometimes just like a good feeling i like this woman voice and i like such a official question coming mm. in a to hear her voice and her question before seeing the space that just felt somehow oh, okay uh, yeah uh, i would like to uh, you know i would like to pay something i would like to pay the money uh, i would like to give in the money then show me your passport 
in, at some kind of like, I just like this or this black had a good feeling and then like to come to him when he's already searching for the money and some. So actually you already come to him when you come to him, he already doesn't have it with him. Yeah, anymore. okay. Well, it, it, yeah, it was it just made me think it was, I just thought even sometimes like a, a stage um, a curtain or something like that. I don't know, because I really felt a little bit this, theater a little bit in it I was a drama so I I got uh -huh. a little bit like that too but okay so I want to, um I already see it behind you I read that you are a classical pianist pianist so no. uh, how does music affect your movies like rhythm or tempo something and um in this movie I we see only the we don't see any music till the rose, isn't it? When he gives the rose, we start. There's only the bar sound yeah. or the traffic, ambulance, exactly. whatever. Yeah. So is your exactly. music, training, yeah. Um, yeah. music training, how does it affect your filmmaking? Well, different. First, when I started making films, uh, I didn't want any music in my films. Uh, I think because I was doing music, but but now but now I'm I'm more open to using music. But I think that the 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 the, the music is more in the in the film itself, no? Because I think uh, yes. both music and film they happen in a certain time spectrum, no? It's like six minutes piano piece or six minutes short film. So and they both try to manipulate uh, time in a way you know like uh, does the time pass slower or faster and so on so in that way of course it makes uh, like i find music very linked to 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 cinema in a way because you know in music you also have like you know a, a theme first theme then you have like a second theme then you have a uh third theme sometimes and then these two themes are in relation to each other and if you talk about sonata form or something like that so that's basically like you know having one character and another character and they're in a relation mm -hmm. and so on so music is very linked it's very very i mean i think it's closest to film really like understanding the rhythm and metrics so i see more film uh, as a music piece itself and that's why in the beginning i had a problem to use music in the film because the film is kind of music in a way, but now I'm I'm actually more and more interested in using. Uh, so I, I started slowly using music inside inside the film. But actually, I for example think sometimes it's the one thing that really ruins cinema. Lots of movies, the way they use the music, they so much manipulate emotions and yeah, course, tell you how to feel. So how to use music is probably really if you're a good filmmaker probably you can do it but some people really fail in this i yeah, i think yeah, as yeah. a general audience so probably you for example in this again in this movie the music uses organic it doesn't it mm -hmm. doesn't make us it doesn't try to tell us that maybe he is the thief maybe he's whatever it doesn't and it's good because i hate that music makes us um feel such mm -hmm. things yeah, yeah of course of course because you don't want to manipulate something, yeah you, yeah course. but so especially you no, know, you don't want to help you know like you don't want to like help out when the substance is missing you know so so i try more to use music here as a part of a scene rather than to to to, to rather than to support any... maybe maybe it's as good that you didn't because for example i for the first couple times maybe two times at least i'm watching your movie i always feel as if is it borko borko is right like that man stop and i'm not telling myself why are you thinking like that you didn't see anything and plus he's tall his wallet is up here somewhere and plus he looks a little bit absent-minded he looks a little yeah. bit too calm like uh, like a little bit more than more calm than he should be in a yeah. that maybe he is a little absent-minded so we already we are taught so much in the cinema this classic narration maybe because he tells this man maybe we end up believing him although there's no nothing for his yeah. kids to be sure so probably yeah. you can have a music in your movie 
and even make it more so Borku is right and make it as an example that how can music really ruin things even worse because I really didn't understand myself. I'm like, why are you thinking he's right constantly? What is wrong with you? <laughs> Maybe he left at home because he's really a little bit absent-minded. And sometimes it doesn't mean absent-minded. Everybody makes some mistakes, forgetfulness. Yeah. He might have forgot it just in the, you know, near the door in his home. We don't mm -hmm. know. So we have no idea. But what yeah but you know also but also this is for me really like for example if you ask me is he right or not right i have no don't. clue yes. honestly you also not, don't because know. for That's me good. i don't know for me i mean generally like like i think whatever plot you have in the film whatever the plot line is let's say yeah. i mean it's only there to uh to to remove it later you know like it's like I don't know. Uh, like plot is for me, you know, when you I don't know, you want to cook something, so you put oil first, you know, and then on this oil you put later what you want. But it's uh, you know the good dish is not about the oil, but you cannot yes. cook something without an oil. So, so, <laughs> so, you, and you don't want like if you know if you feel too much oil, then it's like not well cooked, you know. So That's for me, what... like the, the plot is something you you have to put this thing, you know, somehow in some films, not always, but in some films it feels right to put the plot line, so I put it, but at the end of the, of the, of the, of the dish, let's say this is like one dish which we made this film, at the end of the dish you should not taste the plot at all. You know, it should be, all the yeah, questions should be there. Your, yeah, yeah, this topic, whatever this, this money, what, these kind of things that somebody would be to blame, but we don't know, we don't have witness, we don't know, whatever. It is probably minimum three movies, because I'm a pre-selection uh, jury member for the last two years of the Ushak Short Film Festival. Mm -hmm. So I watched a lot of things. I caught myself minimum three times uh, really thinking one person is right. And although I think I am more trained in watching with no prejudice, even to me, it happened. Mm -hmm. So I realized all these movies out there we put, you can really, maybe maybe that's why some of this topic, if we go back to the big topic again, the racism, sometimes that's why some films are so important. Yeah. I sometimes see that if they constantly want to manipulate people's ideas on some things, some people are lower than the other, like there's always white man supremacy. It's actually emphasized by lots of documentaries, always talked, that we don't hear black uh, biologists talk much, right? <laughs> we yeah, don't hear, yeah, we don't hear African somebody, whatever. So this made me think on this, and this is a dangerous uh, point. So I, I, so you, your movie also made me realize this in me again, that what's going on, I need to, mm -hmm. you know, I need to sort that out. There's something strange. But thanks so much for mm -hmm. making such a this short movie really short in many many senses both in the nature of it and the length of it and gives us so much big topics to talk about and uh, and it was a great pleasure talking to you and hopefully we'll see you again in our future festivals thank you so much oh, I lost you uh, do you hear me? Something, yes, my internet oh, now I see story you. is a little unstable at times. Now I hear you. Yeah, now, now I hear you as well. You no, know, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And it was so nice to be part of your very hospital and nice festival. Thank okay. you a lot. All right. Yeah, we were thrilled and uh, honored to have your movie um, watched by our audience. And um, good luck for your future projects. And again, uh, ho hope to see you again in the future festivals, Boris. Bye. Thank you. OK, thanks a lot. Thank you. And Happy New Year. Yeah, yes, Happy New Year. <laughs> happy New Year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.